So I want to talk to you for a moment about the value of type. Uh, you have all just completed a project where you designed four letters, and um, it took a lot of work, and uh, hopefully you all feel that work paid off, and you have four characters that are consistent with each other and that you're very happy with. Um, I think you should be very happy with them. Most of you did very, very nice work. So, let's tally it up. It's your work. You did two weeks of work. You did countless revisions to get four characters. Let's zoom out for a moment. A complete alphabet is 26 characters, right, for English language. That is six and a half times as much work as you did. Right. However much work you did, divide that, uh, multiply that by 6.5. Uh, but that isn't a complete useful font yet, right? We also need an uppercase of those 26 letters. So that's 52 characters in total. So that's 13 times the work that you did. But that still is not a uh, complete and useful font, is it? We need numerals. So that's 10 more characters, 62 characters total. 15.5 times your work. But <clears throat> 0 through 9 actually doesn't cut it uh, for most modern typefaces. Most modern typefaces have at least two sets of numerals. Um, these are uh, text figures that are designed to be used within body text, within uh, paragraphs. Um, so that brings it up to 72 characters, or 18 times your work. Um, and I just want to say most modern typefaces have three or four different sets of character uh, 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 numerals. Um, five or six if they have special uh, uh, numerals for uh, fractional use or, or subscri subscript or postscript, um, subscript or superscript characters, for example. Um, but we're, we're talking about a modest typeface, so we're just going to say two sets of numerals, 72 characters, 18 times your work. Well, this is a good, useful font, right? No, not yet. We need punctuation. All right, so here we've added all of the punctuation that's available directly on a North American keyboard. Uh, if you buy a computer in the US, these, this is all the punctuation that you can get at directly on your keyboard. Uh, it's a total of 104 characters. 26 times the amount of work that you've done. Are we done yet? Not really. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to say exactly what a complete basic punctuation set is um, because it really varies depending on the designer, depending on the use, depending on the country. But just to keep the math simple, I've said a complete set of basic punctuation. These are really all the basics that you need to make a useful font. Totals 130 characters, which is 32 and a half times the amount of work that you did. But we're not done yet. In type design, spacing the font takes as much time as designing it. For every single character, the designer has to go in and determine how much space it needs on the left and right hand sides, um, needs to test that spacing exhaustively to make sure that there are no uh, funny things happening with the kerning. Uh, they have to set up special exceptions to their spacing when two particular characters meet up, say for example the capital A and the capital V that would need to be uh, <coughs> Uh, brought together far more closely. Uh, so 
it sounds crazy, but it's really true. It, as much time as the type designer spends drawing the characters, he or she spends that much time spacing the characters. It is uh, very fair to say that it's double the work. So, after this basic font has been spaced, it represents 65 times the work that you've done on your four characters. <clears throat> now, this is a tiny font. 130 characters is a bare minimum font. This is really only good for English language text. You cannot use this font for French, Spanish, German, Portuguese, Italian, Swedish. Uh, so you may think, well, okay, I'll just I'll only sell this typeface in um, English-speaking countries: U.S., England, Australia, New Zealand. That's still that's still a pretty big market. Well, yes and no. Um, even within the United States, people often need to typeset Spanish words uh, and French words. Uh, <clears throat> you couldn't sell this typeface in Canada, for example, since it does not support. Uh, does not support French, you could not sell it in Mexico since it does not support Spanish, and you would be alienating any uh, anyone who needs to design for a bilingual audience within the United States who would probably need uh, to typeset French words or Spanish words uh, in addition to English, or maybe all three. Um, <clears throat> and many many, many publications in English borrow words from other languages. This is part of the reason why English is uh, <clears throat> so widely adopted worldwide, but it's also part of why our spelling doesn't seem to follow any coherent single set of rules, because English speakers borrow words and subsume them into English all the time. Uh, a publication like the New York Times or the New Yorker or the Wall Street Journal is going to want to use proper diacritic marks when they print a French name, for example, or a Turkish name, for example. Um, so really, a, a, la a font that only supports English is an incredibly limited font. You would be very, very lucky to be able to sell that font for $10 retail. Um, and you probably wouldn't get that many takers. There, you might, even, if, even if you had absolutely beautiful letters designed, a lot of designers would come, out, come along and go, oh, it doesn't support diacritics. Oh, it doesn't have small caps. Oh, it doesn't support fractions. Yeah, I'm going to pass on this. I'm going to go for uh, a more complete uh, typeface. So this is the typeface that I've been showing you. It's called Kaluna Regular. And this is the complete character set for Kaluna Regular. It has 724 characters. You'll notice it has all of the diacritic marks so that you can use this in any language um, that uses our alphabet. Um, it has many, many ligatures where you combine two or three letters together. Um, it, has, it supports uh, fractions. Uh, it supports mathematical symbols. Um, it even has some uh, directional symbols. You'll notice some arrows down at the bottom. Um, and it has a few special characters that the designer threw in. They threw in uh, a logo uh, for their font foundry and a few um, other special cool little characters. So 724 characters, while it may be uh, a little 
There may be a few extra characters. It's really not excessive by any means. Most modern typefaces are this large, and people want this many characters. Um, so it's becoming a little rough, uh, a little difficult to actually compare to your project anymore, but just as a very rough estimate, Kaluna regular represents about 270 times the amount of work that you did. <clears throat> um, the Kaluna family fonts and you'll notice that there are uh, <clears throat> nine fonts in the family. Light, regular, italic, semi-bold, semi-bold italic, bold, bold italic, and black. Uh, I guess that's eight, eight fonts total. Each one of them retails for $21.95 uh, US dollars. Call that $22. Um, <clears throat> When you consider that that is 724 characters, about 270 times the work that you did for $22, that's not very much. This is, this is what drives me crazy when people complain about the cost of fonts. $20 is not a lot of money for the amount of work that went into this at all. And it's not a lot of money for the amount of use that a designer can get out of it. Um, but just for comparison, just for fun, right now, a movie in New York City costs $15. Um, granted, movies in New York City are a little bit more expensive than the rest of the country, but we are all here in New York City, right? So a movie in New York City is $15. If you get a small popcorn and a small drink, um, that's another $10, unfortunately. So if you go to the movies today, uh, buy a small popcorn and a small drink, that's $25 for two or three hours of entertainment. Um, two or three hours later, the movie's over, the popcorn's gone, and you're probably thirsty again. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about something more long-lasting. Adobe, Adobe Creative Cloud software. It's $50 a month for a professional license. Uh, $20 a month for students. So that $20, if you're a student, buys you 30 days of software access. So uh, you pay your $20, 30 days later, you have to pay again to keep, to keep using the Adobe software. Um, let's talk about something a little bit longer lasting, uh, a hooded sweatshirt. You buy a hoodie at Old Navy, which is a fairly inexpensive place to buy clothing. Uh, that's $20, $25. Um, if you take decent care of an Old Navy hoodie, it should last you five years of regular wear. Uh, if, if you wear it on a regular basis. So $20, $25 for five years. Well, it's getting a little bit better, right? So if you buy a single style of Kaluna, something in the Kaluna family, let's say you buy Kaluna Bold for $22, that font can be used for decades, literally. You can plop down your $22 right now, and you can easily still be using that font 20 years from now. I have fonts that are 30 years old that I can use with no problem at all. It is one of the best deals in software available. Um, <clears throat> so, just one of these eight fonts represents 270 times the amount of work you did, and it can be used for decades, and it costs $22. I call that a good deal. I call that a bargain. Um, and just to mention, if you look at the pricing, Coluna Regular, the one that I, was, I have been demonstrating to you, is actually free. Um, this type foundry, Ex, Ex Libris, uh, does this. When they have a large family, they usually just give away one or two of the styles as a, a marketing technique um, with the idea that someone can try one of the styles 
And if they like it, then they will buy the italic and maybe buy the bold. Um, and it's it's actually worked out quite well for them. Um, you see their fonts everywhere, and I think it's really, really due to this uh, marketing policy of theirs. But you're poor. You're poor. I know. Art students are poor. You have a lot of money to spend on supplies. You have a lot of money to spend on software. These computers aren't cheap. Uh, books aren't cheap. Um, it's hard to uh, it's hard to balance a job with studio art classes. I know. I was an art student once, and most type founders and type designers were art students once too. So they they know as well. Um, so instead of just making you feel guilty and trying to guilt you into paying for fonts. Uh, I have compiled a list. This is a list of sources for high quality fonts that are available to you as a student uh, with very low cost or, or uh, many of them have free licenses. Some of them are free for non-commercial work, some of them are free for student work, some of them are free period. Some of them are uh, employ a pay-as-you-wish model. Um, there's a wide variety of free, low-cost, high-quality, legal typefaces out there. Um, and I'm going to uh, continually update this list. This is on your uh, class blog. I'm making it available to all of you, and I will update it when I learn more. Um, <clears throat> so with so many high quality, legal, free, or low cost typefaces out there. There's absolutely no reason to pirate fonts. So please don't do it. Um, it's, it's illegal, it can get you in trouble, but uh, more importantly, it's, it's morally wrong. Think about all the work that goes into a typeface. Um, to pirate a font is to steal that work basically, from someone who worked very hard to make a very useful thing at a very low cost. Um, so definitely check out this list that I provided for you on, uh, on the Canvas site for Parsons students and on the class blog for City College students. And that's that. <laughs>